how is the water, how is the, and everything. You need to check everything to realize in your mind all uh, different uh, strategies that can be tomorrow before on the race and uh, to be ready for everything. Something crazy or something not, but if you do, you need to do. Do step by step and I'm on Olympic Games. Okay, <laughs> as for every athlete, uh, Olympic Games is the biggest point <laughs> in my family. It uh, was not another kind of sport. <laughs> Hello, my name is Axel and I'm here with Pavlo. And Pavlo is a, an Olympian. And Pavlo, tell me, how are you uh, feeling like an Olympian right now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, like an Olympian uh, second time in my life. Because I've been in Olympic Games in Rio and now it's my second Olympic Games. Uh, I feel good, really. Thank you. Uh, it was uh, not easy to take a, a ticket to Tokyo, but I've done it and I'm happy of it. Let's go back to your first Olympics, right? How was the journey to get to the Olympics in Rio? I think it was uh, easier. It was uh, much easier than uh, now because I was younger and I didn't think a lot about it. I, I just paddling and uh, everything was okay i do step by step and i'm on olympic games okay <laughs> but now when you begin older so it became harder <laughs> to to work and, and to be motivated and, um, i think now uh, for me it's more important and uh, now uh, i more realize what i I do. How was the road to Tokyo then? Did uh, this extra year help you or it did not help you? How was it for you? I think it helped me. It was one more year to to work uh, with myself, to change something, to, to fix uh, all problem moments. And I think it's bad. it was better for me. After first Olympic uh, Games in 2017, I had a trauma with uh, with my shoulder and after that was very hard years and uh, every next year was easier and uh, better for me when i know the olympic games uh, will be not in 2020 and 21 for me it was oh whew, i have one more year <laughs> tell me what does it mean to the olympics in general what does it mean for you is it an honor for you or can you even describe that feeling for me, it mean it's a lot because I'm a big fan of canoe. I like canoe. I I think that I do it not not for money, really. <laughs> I do it because I love it, love it so much. And uh, as for every athlete, uh, Olympic Games is the biggest point of result, and uh, uh, it's uh, one more chance to to realize a dream, <laughs> to take a medal and uh, I work a lot. When did you start uh, canoeing and uh, what, do you remember your first years uh, of training? How was it? <laughs> I start uh, when I was 11 and uh, I start because uh, all my family is a canoe athlete. My mother was uh, kayaking and now she works like coach yeah but she works with uh, with child 10 15 years old till 15 i was working with my mom and then i start to work with my grandpa and now i work with him till today so <laughs> in my family uh, was not another kind of sport <laughs> than canoe sprint for you i don't know because i'm not a canoe athlete but i'm, uh, I'm a kayaker but maybe you can tell me uh, how was it for you was it easy to get on the right knee or were you trying one knee and another the other uh, knee? <laughs> no no i don't know but uh, fr from a child before i start kayaking i know that i uh, when i was a little bit older uh, 10 11 years old i know i will do canoe and i will do on the right knee I didn't try left, I, I stand up on right and go. And 
so I haven't tried another position. Let's say you're an Olympian in 1000 meters, right? Uh, so tell me, mm -hmm. let's say that you're a specialist in that. Uh, how did it, how did you develop the skills in 1000 where you maybe you are you have secret skills in 200 and 500 as well tell me about that oh when i when i was a child uh, my favorite distance was 200 meters maybe as uh, every child because it's fast it's uh, <laughs> not so hard and uh, i was good on it but uh, my coach uh, my grandpa said uh, you will do 1000 meters and uh, start to work with me and uh, then i started uh, to do it and on 15 years old i absolutely won the ukrainian championship uh, on the child so ch this child won 1500 and 200 meters yes and uh, on six 2016 and 17 i was a european champion a junior on 1500 meters so my coach decided also to do 1000 meters and uh, we tried and it was good tell me what's the race strategy for you because uh, for example 500 meters some say it's like a like 200 meters but just longer and just survive to try to keep it till the end right uh, mm -hmm. 1000 meters is a bit different it's uh, way longer so tell me what's your strategy how do you approach it it's a little bit a secret but uh, in on different races i do different mm -hmm. tactics how, what athletes near me and how is the weather and uh, how is the water how is uh, and everything you need to check everything to realize in your mind all uh, different uh, strategies that can be tomorrow before on the race and uh, to be ready for everything you need to be ready for not uh, your wind to not comfortable weather maybe too hot weather or too cold maybe rainy you need to be ready for everything and uh, then it was uh, not a problem for you to win the race when you're ready for everything it uh, became easier the most important thing in the sport is the athlete right uh, but then you have the paddle and the boat what is more important the paddle or the boat in your opinion everything but uh paddle paddle is more individual i think if you change a paddle or boat so you can uh, rent a boat but it's harder to rent a paddle <laughs> right it's a kind of sport specific question you know different answers for everybody. I, I understand i understand yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh well tell me how is it in ukraine uh, right uh, how is the sport perceived there how popular is it what's the culture there uh, how many clubs you have that uh, are competing between each other in every big city you can uh, do canoe or kayak and uh, it's okay uh, is this uh, school is good uh, i think not in every city and not in every club because some of our sports schools is uh, really poor so you need to be more professional uh, so as my school where I was born and uh, where I started, it's not very good uh, gyms, it's not very good boats, but uh, child from this school are very good because they are more motivated because uh, they don't have anything. Some, some of guys don't have a good pedal or a good boat and they try to work more, to work a lot, to have uh, own boat or own paddle to have more uh, good sport camps and other things so i think uh, that's also good it's good for motivation <laughs> a young catholic uh, in ukraine is uh, it became i think uh, a little bit more popular now our federation became more popular because we have uh, instagram page good uh, we have uh, two journalists in our teams that do a lot of work to become our sport more popular. We do video from uh, our team training and uh, from our competition. We do video and photos always. I think it also makes our sport more popular.
uh, in our country i think in future uh, we will, we maybe will organize any competition like a junior european championship or maybe senior european champion so ukraine wants to be uh, also like a country for competition but we need to to finish our, to build our first area first uh, good area and uh, in future i think it became more uh, more good uh, and more popular in ukraine as, as i think right because government do do something for it what do you think about uh, the change in the olympic program to the next olympics because they will remove uh, some distances there and there will be changes what do you think about that that's very bad for our sport because when they change a the distance uh, it was mm, okay but uh, it was very bad for just for canoe because in uh, uh, beijing we had uh, four disciplines in uh, London and Rio three, and now only two for sprinters. Carrier of in Paris, uh, they take uh, two medal from uh, from canoe sprint. So it was twelve medal on canoe sprint, and then Paris only ten. So that's very bad for our sport. My opinion is that uh, it should be every boat class. Uh, singles doubles and, uh, and, and four man and boats four. yeah and then all distance is 200 500 to, to, to 1000 meters like uh, just uh. The, the world championships right <laughs> or, or, or european championships that's that's yeah. how i think it should be right no it's something impossible and it's uh, it's also too much as i think because too much olympic champion in our sport will be like in in athletic okay but uh, i think the 12 it was a little for us maybe 16 medal was okay <laughs> will be okay but then it's really not not good <laughs> yeah but not everybody is competing in each boat class it's not like you know one someone could like compete both in kayak and canoe and there are differences it's not basically the same right so i think it, it, that that would be the perfect way uh, in my opinion but, yeah <laughs> yeah yes it will be really perfect but uh, i think it's, it's too impossible it's impossible <laughs> then again you can argue that it's not like kind of representing uh, the best way uh, of, of it you know so it's yeah. a problem of uh, international uh, federation because i think slalom may be more money in slalom maybe more sponsorship in slalom and the, for them it's uh, maybe more comfortable tell me what do you love about the sport in general like when you're in the competition or wherever in, in training in competition just about the sport of sprint ka kayak and canoe <laughs> what do you love about it? in our sport i like to pedal just i like to be in on the on the water to be on canoe to feel how my boat goes through the water for me this feeling is very important and it's like a, a drug for me <laughs> i like it yeah uh, i like it more than running with the skiing and other so i i also do it and i like it but uh, being in canoe it's more for me <laughs> it's perfect that's what i like and for sure this uh, feeling of uh, fighting uh, on the competition it's also uh, it's very hard feeling when you prepare this when you're nervous a little bit when you are sometimes can normal sleep normal eat and other things but then you feel this uh, like a feeling of fight i don't know it's very nice endorphins <laughs> it's <laughs> hard to even describe it right yeah <laughs> what do you think right now is your biggest achievement to this day i think it's uh, four place in rio four place uh, on 100 in rio is the biggest one what are your future goals looking ahead what are your future goals oh for sure it's a medal medal olympic that's uh why I work so hard every 
every day, <laughs> every hour. <laughs> if you could go back in time and uh, mm -hmm. teach yourself something, uh, to what time you would go and what would you tell yourself? <laughs> I've think about it uh, in all my life way, uh, but uh, but I don't want because it's my way. It was my mistake. My some of my very hard and big mistakes made sometimes. But I need to to, to done it to be to be mine. <laughs> to be uh, this Paolo that I am today. <laughs> I think uh, so nothing to change. <laughs> but what to tell for another guy maybe uh, to not fair to do something what do you feel to, you need to do. Do how you feel. Uh, that may be something crazy or something not uh, understanding other, from other people. But if you feel, you need to do. <laughs> it's, it's only, I think, one way to do something big and something great. All right, those are very encouraging words, and I say thank you to you. I thank you for your time and your interview, uh -huh. and I wish you a medal in the Olympics, and I see you <laughs> in the you. Olympics. Thank you. All right. And thank you for watching this interview till the end. I hope you find this interview interesting, and I advise you to look for other interviews that I have recorded on this channel and publish. And in the future, I will publish even more interviews with Olympians and other interesting people around the world. So, tune in to Axel Industries, subscribe to the channel, and do your best to be, become the best.